Hey everyone, all you weather geeks out there, it is a fresh edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video after taking a few days away. Uh, we uh, Last time we chatted on Weather for Weather Geeks, we were talking about wildfire smoke and air quality, kind of uh, ad nauseum for several days. And one thing we kind of discovered, uh, when all was said and done, the, uh, wet, the computer modeling when it comes to, to smoke in the atmosphere leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, as it turns out, uh, we did not see many impacts around here at all. Our air quality was degraded, but it was fairly restricted to only the most sensitive individuals. Most of us, for most of us, the air quality was fine at the end of last week. Uh, you know, uh, weather modeling, uh, depicting weather uh, systems, well, that's a lot more reliable than smoke modeling, as it turns out. But anyway, we've turned the page on that. Um, some needed rain up over those fires in Canada, just like back here at home over the last 24 hours. Here's a look at some rain gauge uh, numbers dating back to about 6 or 7 o'clock Sunday evening. Generally speaking, the highest amount south and east of Youngstown, uh, some places pretty close to an inch, uh, underperformed a little bit in kind of the heart of our viewing area. Warren down to Youngstown, the 224 corridor. Uh, we had a dry slot that pushed in for a time Sunday evening, kind of uh, restricted the amounts a little bit in that zone, but it's all beneficial, whatever your amount ended up being. At the Youngstown Warren Airport, we picked up 0.48 in total, uh, 0.18 before midnight last night, and another three-tenths of an inch since midnight. We had some heavier amounts here and there, as I just showed you. Uh, not enough to erase our deficits, certainly. We're still an inch or more behind average through the first almost two weeks of June, but we've got more beneficial rains in our forecast at times during midweek and taking us into parts of the weekend as well. One thing you may have noticed this morning when it was still raining, it was kind of muggy outside. The air felt kind of heavy, even though it wasn't very warm. Um, the dew points were elevated in the lower 60s, but we've seen a decline in those dew points over the last several hours. It's kind of cool outside this evening it, and the air is dry. It's very comfortable, but it really doesn't feel like the first part of June. Now, the dew points are not gonna be much of a story in the next several days. They'll bounce back up into the lower 60s for a time ahead of the next front on Thursday, but then behind that front, another drier air mass pushes in. And, you know, going along with the dry month of May that featured no severe weather, no thunderstorms even, and uh, dew points were low throughout May, that trend generally continuing into the first part of June. We've had a very relatively comfortable stretch uh, compared to some years uh, so far in the warm weather season. No doubt we're going to have some hot and humid days coming up before the summer is through, but if you uh, have paid attention to our longer range outlooks, including our summer forecast put out a couple of weeks ago, we kind of emphasize that just like every other summer, there's going to be some hot days. The number of really hot days will probably be restricted some this summer. It probably won't go into the record books as a, uh, a season that features double-digit 90-degree days and oppressive humidity with great frequency, that sort of thing. Uh, as uh, El Nino is coming on, we're going to talk more about El Nino at the end of this video. Um, El Nino summers, especially if it's a strong El Nino developing, tend to not be all that hot around here. Last night and this morning's rain is now a few hours to our east. We've had clouds for a lot of the afternoon, but as of this recording, it's 7.09. Uh, the, the sky is partially clearing. We're having a nice sunset this evening with these thinning clouds, and we'll start tomorrow with some sun. Busy evening across the southern tier of states. Little tornado watch across the hill country of Texas, severe thunderstorm watch front range of the Rockies, and also a severe thunderstorm watch down towards I-10 along the uh, Gulf Coast this evening. Severe weather will be top of mind again on Tuesday in parts of the south, maybe a little bit the corridor, maybe a little farther north than today. And same idea on Wednesday. Um, severe thunderstorms will be a possibility uh, in Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, maybe extreme northern parts of Florida into parts of the Carolinas as well. Back here at home, we'll start out our Tuesday with some sun, but I think the clouds will increase by midday. I think our model's a little too aggressive here with some of these midday showers. Not ready to bite on that idea just yet. But I do think showers will become increasingly likely as the afternoon wears on. So keep this in mind if you have outdoor plans after work on Tuesday, golf league night, softball, baseball, mowing the grass, anything you want to do outdoors. It's probably going to be raining in a fair amount of the area towards late afternoon and early evening. And actually, rain will continue to come and go then into tomorrow night and into Wednesday morning. We have an upper level low spinning across the Great Lakes and little spokes or disturbances pivoting around that upper low, kind of like spokes on a bicycle wheel. We'll come down out of the northwest and give us occasional bouts of wet weather into the day on Thursday. This uh, next uh, disturbance approaches. It's a legitimate cold front. Uh, Thursday, we start out dry, but uh, 
showers probably push in before the afternoon is through. So we picked up a half an inch to an inch worth of rain in most of the area last night and this morning. I think we'll see another half an inch to an inch worth of rain uh, between uh, Tuesday afternoon and Thursday late afternoon, early evening. All of this is beneficial. We will take it. If your outdoor plans are inconvenienced, that's not great, but in the bigger picture in the grand scheme of things yes of course we really really could use this rain temperature trends uh you know this is not air conditioning weather for most of us in the next several days uh below average highs through friday close to average for father's day weekend including father's day itself will be in the upper 70s to around 80 over the weekend saturday looks like a drop dead gorgeous day wall-to-wall -wall sunshine a few more clouds sunday and maybe some showers around and then the heat will start to build now about a week or so ago we thought this heat would try to build by father's day weekend it just looks like it's going to be delayed by a few days. Looks pretty toasty next week. Father's Day forecast, upper 70s to around 80. I don't think it's a washout. I don't think there's a lot of thunder and lightning necessarily, but showers will be a possibility. We'll be fine-tuning that Father's Day outlook as we get a little bit closer to the weekend. Before we leave you this evening, let's take a look at the state of the oceans across uh, the uh, the globe. And, you know, we don't just talk about El Nino when we, when we talk about longer range forecasting and seasonal outlooks and that sort of thing. We look at all the oceans because the oceans and the atmosphere play together. They're very closely linked. Your eye is drawn on a map like this to a few different areas. Here's our uh, El Nino right here. Look at all that warm, very warm water off the coast of South America. We've done a very quick flip from a pretty potent La Nina for the last three years to an emerging moderate to strong El Nino over the next couple of months. But notice the cold water up here east of Hawaii and off the coast of uh, Mexico and California, this is a little bit unusually paired with El Nino. And if this water stays kind of on the chilly side, it may counteract uh, the impacts of El Nino a little bit. Of interest as we go into the hurricane season, which officially began on June 1st, all this really warm water across the Atlantic, es especially in the what's called the main development region where a lot of hurricanes are born, in the Atlantic Basin, the, the water is super warm through here. Now, typically in an El Nino, that uh, typically uh, in the hurricane season, we see a reduction in activity in the Atlantic Basin because of increased wind shear. That's one of the ways El Nino impacts the hurricane season. But with all this warm water across the Atlantic, especially down in here off the coast of Africa, it'll be interesting to see if El Nino is able to squash more or less than usual the amount of uh, hurricane activity there are arguments to be made with all this warm water that and especially we've got this cold water over here that may neuter el nino a little bit there are arguments to be made that we may have a more active hurricane season despite it being an el nino that remains to be seen but for us with el nino coming on this summer we favor not that hot of a summer there's gonna be hot days but overall in the, in the big picture not that hot we also favor a somewhat drier than average summer. We've already seen this during the first 10 days of June, of course. The next couple of weeks will be more active. There will be more chances for rain, certainly, over the next couple of weeks. But when we look at the summer as a whole, June, July, August, it probably is going to come out in the wash as somewhat drier than average, but maybe not as dry and not as cool as it could be or could have been if we didn't have this uh, cool water off the coast of uh, North America out here. If this were warm through here along with El Nino, uh, that would tilt the odds more in favor of a very cool summer and perhaps a very dry summer as well. That cooler water may neuter El Nino enough that the summer as a whole may not be super cool, may not be super dry. So that's the way things are kind of looking on this June the 12th. We'll do it again on Tuesday on Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll take another look at the uh, rain chances for the rest of the week, the weekend forecast, and much, much more. Hope to see you then.